So last week we looked at how we, the, the, from the scriptures, who we were and who we are now. We saw last week that we were dead in sin, but Christ, the, 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 God brought us to life through Christ Jesus. Amen. He brought us to life through Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 6. We read it where he says, we were dead in our sins and trespasses, but God, by mercy, by his mercy, he brought us to life in Christ Jesus. And now that we have been brought to life in Christ Jesus, we have become sons of God, sons and daughters of God. And then we saw who we are now. And then we, that, that took us to the book of Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, where the Bible says, and because we are sons, God has sent his spirit to dwell in our hearts, giving us the assurance that we belong to God. The spirit of God gives us assurance and helps us to refer to God as father. And it is an authentic reference. It's a genuine reference. God sees us as sons and daughters, and we see him as our father. And that is the truth. All right. Now, we saw also the beauty of the word of God, how the word of God is the source of all things, how the word of God is what holds everything together, how the word of God sustains. In fact, the book of Hebrews chapter 1, Verse 3, Bible says, he created and he sustains the world by the word of his power. And this is the word that we found out in the book of Peter as well. He said that we are born of the word. We are born of the word. And the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So we were, what, what gave birth to us is also what sustains us. So you cannot outgrow the word and i know you you don't even want to look look forward to it because there's nothing as sweet as the world outside anywhere so he says here he said we are born not of perishable things or corruptible things but we are born of the living and eternal word of god is the word of god that gave birth to that transformed us make us god's children is the word of god that that gave us assurance of forgiveness is the word of God that brings deliverance and healing to us is the word of God that is the food of our soul in fact the Bible says desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby if you want to grow in capacity get into the word of God and prayer if you want to grow in your knowledge and experience of God and the kingdom of God the benefits of the kingdom uh, Corinthians says that we, uh, he says that the, the Lord has given us, God has given us his spirit so that we will know the things that are freely given to us. The, to access the things that are freely given to us requires intimacy. In fact, it, not just intimacy, it requires you dissolving, melting into the word of God and allowing the word to melt, to dissolve right into you so that you become one with the word. So that the prayer that Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, he said, so that they may be in me and I in them and the father will be in us. That, that prayer now, you will experience the answer to that prayer. So that is why I said, I said, when you grab a, gr a grain of coffee, you know, uh, scoop a grain of coffee from your coffee pot and you have a cup of water and you put them together and then the coffee dissolves in hot water. So that is how we dissolve in God's word. We dissolve into God's word and the word of God comes, it takes, it changes our constitution so that we become what God wants us to be. <laughs> it's exciting. I'm excited. I'm really excited. If there's any mountain in your life that you are faced with, if there's any hurdle that you are struggling to cross, if there are questions in your mind, if there's any fear and, and anxiety, if there's any uncertainty at all, I want to reassure you that get into the word, get into the word, take a week, take two weeks, get into the word. The, you will see answers. You will see things melt. You will see things disappear. You will see, you will, you will see the word works. It does work. Now, I'd like to take you uh, a step further into how the word gives you access.
to acting like God, to becoming like God. The word makes you become like God. And in fact, the scripture says the word makes you God. So I want, to, I want you to come with me. Now, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing John, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in other words, faith doesn't come by praying. Praying is good. Prayer, faith doesn't come by fasting. Fasting is good. Faith comes only by hearing and hearing the word of God. As you read, as you study, you're going to see that you begin to change. When you open yourself up to the word, what it does is the word questions your what you call your present reality. It challenges it. It plows your perspective. It plows your understanding. It plows your mindset. It plows your concept. It challenges everything. It turns everything upside down. And then the word, the Bible calls it the seed as well. The seed will fall right into your heart. And through meditation, these are the seasons that you got to go through. Through deep meditation, constant meditation and quality prayer, you are bringing the dew and the rain and the sun. After a while, you, what you're going to find out is you're going to see that the word, some things are, are changing within you. Some things are emerging within you. Understanding is coming. New desires are emerging. It's, in other words, the seed of the word is beginning to germinate. There are some things growing in you. You have passion now for God. You have love for the neighbor. Your forgiveness is, is, is increasing. You are no longer as short fused as you used to be. You are no longer, you don't wear your emotions in your, on your, in your cuffs anymore your sleeve anymore. You are, your language is beginning to clean up. But much more than that, you begin to hunger for God. You begin to desire God. You begin to see people the way God sees uh, people. You begin to respond to things and you begin to interpret things from God's perspective. That means you are being changed. You are being changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're being changed. Amen. Now, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. When you are reading the word of God, re read it and say it to yourself. Say it to yourself. Last Sunday, I said to you, when you read and there is anything there, remove that name and put my name there. Now you put your name. I give you permission to put your name, okay? Put your name. When the Bible says ye are blessed, say, put your name there. I said, I I'm going to put my name, I, Jerry Samuels, I am blessed. When the Bible says you are, you are favored, put it there, I, Jerry Samuels, I am favored. You know what I'm saying? When he says, by his stripes, you were healed. I say, yeah, by the stripes of Jesus, Jerry Samuels is healed. Amen. That is how to read. As you keep saying it and repeating it to yourself and repeating it to yourself and repeating in the washroom, in the toilet, in the car, in the store, in the office, when you lay down in bed, when you are in the shower, it doesn't matter where, keep repeating it to yourself. Uh, don't, don't, don't mess yourself up with the verse this, verse that. If you can get that, that's fine. But the, the verses and the chapters, are, it's not where the key is. The key is in the, the life, the juice of it that is being discharged into your spirit. Amen. Just meditate on the word and keep reciting it to yourself. As you keep saying it, it's as you are hearing you say it to yourself. In other words, you have got to say to yourself till it drops. Something clicks on the inside of your spirit. Faith will result. Amen. Now, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of, oh my goodness, this is exciting. I'm, I'm already preaching myself happy. I want you to come with me to something. Let's look at the book of Mark here. Mark, amen. Mark chapter 11. This is a very profound scripture that I found here. Mark chapter 11, all right? And I want to, I'm going to read it from the, uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Let's start from verse 22. Uh, I'm reading it from the King James Version here, all right? Okay, I'm going to read it from two translations so that just to bring out the point I want to make. 
Okay, this was the story of when Jesus, um, the narrative is a, is a, is a, is a, Jesus was walking with his disciples and then uh, he saw a fig tree and a uh, fig tree did not have fruit. So now he cursed the fig tree. Now, uh, let me say something. Um, he was using a fig tree to teach a lesson. So I know where church minds, where your mind is going. He's, he's Lord. He's supposed to know this, but it's not the time of the fig. Why did this? You, don't worry about that. The lesson is what is important. And he is the Lord of all. Anyway, he can choose to use any object. He can use anything to teach a lesson, to, to you know, do his purpose anyway. So don't, don't confuse yourself with the whys and why nots. Let's focus on the key here. So the following day, as they were returning, Peter said to him, uh, Peter calling to remembrance, verse 21, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Verse 22 says, and Jesus answering said unto him, unto them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Okay? Have faith in God. I, I, I'd like you to come with me. I'd like to read it from a, a different translation. This is the Greek literal translation. All right? Verse 21 again. Mark 11, verse 21. And Peter, having remembered, said unto him, Rabbi, lo, the fig tree that thou didst curse is dried up. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith of God. There are two different things here. The first one, the King James Version says, have faith in God. The literal translation from Greek says, have faith of God. Have faith of God. So having God's faith is what the scripture is recommending for us to do. Have God's kind of faith. So Peter, Peter was surprised. He's never seen these things before. So Jesus turned to him to them and said, Hey guys, you gotta operate in God's kind of faith. He's not talking about have faith in God, like trust in God. That's not what he meant. Have operate, have, cultivate, have, possess, have, use God's kind of faith. What is God's kind of faith? What is God's kind of faith? The Bible says in Genesis chapter one, in the beginning was the world. In the beginning, God created the world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John chapter one is still on my mind. So, uh, you know, but he says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. I'm reading the King James version by heart. Amen. And darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters and the Lord said, let there be. And Jesus saw the fig tree said, he said to him, let no man eat from thee. Ah. He said, let there be, let no man eat from thee. Words, words, words that are potent from a place of assurance, a place that is void of doubt. He said, have God's kind of faith. Look at verse 23. Now, he said, to, for verily I say to you that whoever, ah, whoever, open to everybody. This is why the witch doctors can curse and it works because whoever, you know what we call witch doctors? Obia man, amen. The, 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 the shamans, you know, the, the, the people who worship Satan, they can invoke spirits and make declarations and it works. Truly it works, it does work. But why did he, why do, does it work? Because God is giving us the key, giving us an insight to how he has empowered mankind to operate. He says, for verily I say to you that whoever may say to this mountain, be taken up and be cast into the sea, and may not doubt in his heart, but may believe that the things that he saith do come to pass. 
it shall be to him whatever he may say. Hallelujah. Now verse 24 says, because of this, I say to you, I'm reading also from the Greek literal translation. All right. So because of the way God set the order that man can speak <laughs> and he can have whatever he says, if he does not doubt himself, therefore, verse 24, he said, because of this, I say to you, all, he was talking to them now, I say to you all, whatever praying ye do ask, believe that you receive and it shall be yours. Whatever, while praying, as you petition, believe that you have received it. Whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is, while praying, as you petition God, believe that you receive it. And he says, and it shall be to you. Amen. And it shall be to you. Words. God is committed to you. That is how he designed us. He designed us to, for our words to work. He designed us for our words to bear fruit because we're created in his image. God's word bears fruit. Isaiah 55. Come with me, please. Isaiah 55. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55. Come with me. Hallelujah. And I, we're going to look at it from verse, uh, <clears throat> for, from verse, verse, verse 9. <clears throat> Let's look at it from verse 10. Verse 10 is just to cut to the chase because of time. For, I'm still reading it from the Greek literature translation, okay? For as come down dot the shower, in other words, he's saying, as the showers do come down and the snow from the heavens and thither returneth not, it doesn't go back, but hath watered the earth, but has watered the earth and had caused it to yield and to spring up and had given seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So is my word that goeth, that goes out of my mouth, it turneth not back unto me empty. This is the reason. But, but he says, but had done that which I desired and prosperously affected that for which I sent it. <laughs> in other words, successfully achieve the purpose for which I sent it. That's God's word. That's what God said. Just like the rain comes down and it doesn't return, just like the snow falls and it's going to dissolve and it's going to turn to water and it's going to nourish the earth so that grass can grow, plants can grow, so that those of us who like vegetables can have enough vegetables, and those, those who like beef, the vegetables, we feed the beef and the beef the animals and, and you can have healthy beef, healthy animals to eat. In other words, the food to the eater and bread to the sower is all sponsored by the same rain that falls from heaven. So the same thing, God is saying as, it, as rain comes to re make the, 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 the meadows grow, and to provide food. So is the same thing. My word returns when I send it, it will achieve just as effectively as rain achieves the purpose for which, it's, which it falls, you know, is sent into the earth. So my word will not return to me empty. My word will not return to me empty. Bible says it will achieve that which it is sent. What is the word that is sent? What is that word that is sent to you? What is the word that is sent to you? 
What is that word that God, by his spirit, has sent into your heart? This comes from meditation. You can't just flip one Bible and say, well, John 3.16 says, John 3.16, we know what it says. But until that John 3.16 becomes rema, it, the juice, you, as you, through meditation, you squeeze the juice and something drops inside your spirit. And you say, ah, something just dropped. You know, you, you will know when the light comes, when light emits from the pages of scripture. You know, when, when something, a light is turned on as you meditate on the word of God. That is the revelation. That is the word that now you can bank on. And as soon as you see that, then you got, that is God's word to you and is going to achieve that which, you, which it is sent for. But you know how it's going to achieve it? You have to take that same word and then you have got to repeat it. You have got to release it. You are going to unleash it through your own mouth. Hallelujah. That is God's kind of word. That is how the characteristic of the word of God is it prospers. Why does it prosper? Hey, can I tell you something? Do you know why we, uh, people that don't believe in God curse one another and say negative things? Because Satan, in, take, because Satan understands the power of the tongue. When a human being talks, it becomes legal on earth. So Satan will take control of people's tongues and use, oh, you see this good for nothing person. You see the other one, the, the, you see the, everything negative and negative. And Satan is start, standing up somewhere and say, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And he will be suggesting things that you are saying negative things. And the more you say negative things, the more you are messing up your life. You are messing up the family. You are messing up your finances. You are messing up your health. I'm missing. I had to repent of these things myself. I analyze, I analyze, I analyze, and sometimes you analyze too much, you analyze to the wrong side. I had to repent, and I want you to change your mind today. Amen. Now, when you take God's word and you meditate on it, the word of God has the potency to straighten you, it will straighten you first. And when you take that word, then you recite the word. You say it as you are receiving it fresh from the rema. The rema in the state of that revelation you are getting, you declare it. When you come across something that jumps at you, say it out. Come with me again to the book of Romans. Ah, this is exciting. This is exciting. This is, the God, this is God's kind of faith. You say, have God's kind of faith. I want to show you what God's kind of faith is. Romans chapter 4, and we're going to look at it from verse 16. Now I'm going to uh, change my translation and go to the New Living Translation because it reads very beautifully at the, from the New Living Translation here. J uh, if you are there, come with me. All right? This is what it says. All right? Now, so the promise is received by faith. And this sums up everything that you hear from God. Everything that you hear from God, the promise is received by faith. The promise is always received by, by faith. When God speaks to you, the promise is received by faith. Amen. God's word to you can only be accessed through faith. Now, verse 16 says, so the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift, and we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. If we have faith like Abraham's, you know, so many Christians are going back to living under the law of Moses by practicing Judaism, <laughs> ignorance. You know, when people are not driven or led by the Spirit of God, it's very easy to fall into error. The the Jewish culture is not God's culture. A lot of people don't know. Now, but God is saying here, and, and there is no culture on earth that belongs to God. The culture of God is superior. The culture of God is a culture of love, uh, 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 righteousness, and justice. That is God's culture. All right? Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. If you want to see it, go there. It's a, it's a culture of love, righteousness, and, and, and justice. All right? Now, look at it here. He said, so whether we are Jews to keep the Jewish laws or the Ten Commandments or not, whether we are able to get, uh, how do you call it, uh, circumcised on the eighth day, like my people do in our culture, 
circumcised on the eighth day and all the things that we do that look like, you know, we people feel like, okay, if you do this and do that and do this and do this, no, God is saying here, he said, and we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. If we have faith, like Abraham's kind of faith, for Abraham is the father of all who believe. That is what the scripture mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. Even when, verse 18, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. Even when there was no hope, no reason to believe, Abraham kept hoping. Abraham kept believing, hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, ah, faith comes by hearing. When you have heard God's word, then you can have faith. God's word is the foundation for faith. It is the birther, the mother of faith. It is the sustainer of faith. It is the nurturer of faith. It is the, it is the executor of faith. It's God's word. Now it says, that is how many descendants you will have. God was giving him a promise. All right, look at verse 19. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead. And so was Sarah's womb. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. Uh, so circumstances did not affect him. All right. What, what many people call, but you know how, how I feel or what I heard or what I see did not affect Abraham. Abraham, 100 years. Sarah, 90. Even at 50, so many people have given up having children. Even at 60, so many people have wound up themselves. But Babu says, even, Babu says, Abraham did not waver in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. Ah, verse, oh my goodness. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And in this, he brought glory to God. Who was fully, he, sorry, verse 21, he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him the one who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Hallelujah. That is amazing. That is God's kind of faith. God's kind of faith is hinged and locked in God's word. It is sustained by God's word. It is nurtured by God's word. It is held in place by God's word. And it gets stronger by God's word. Circumstances around you may change. <laughs> when God spoke to Abraham, Abraham was still younger. Sarah had hope. At 75, Sarah was 65. Maybe the hope that you are holding on to has ebbed away. Maybe the thing you were thinking, oh, yeah, because I have this, Lord, I know you can do it. I can. But when that thing is no longer working, when you are locked in and you do not have any other option, when there is no other way out, when the news is at its worst, we have got to hold on to the word of God. It works. It works. And keep declaring it. Have God's kind of faith. Declaring it and keep giving God thanks. For Jesus said, have God's kind of faith. For whosoever shall say and does not doubt in his heart, he shall have whatever he says. So let the word of God produce faith that makes you speak. Not speaking about your complaint. Not speaking about what your circumstances. But speaking and picturing and imagining and pursuing what God's word says. 
it will always deliver. Bible says, for so is my word. God said, for so is my word. It will prosper in whatever I sent it to. It will not return to me void. It is time for you and for me and for us as a family, church family, and everybody who is hearing me, we believers, we have got to learn to speak. Keep speaking. Keep doing. Keep believing. Keep meditating. If the word can fix it, it can be fixed. So you have got no other choice. Stick with it. If the word can fix it, it you, 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 from my testimony, you saw how God healed me of osteomyelitis. I did, there's another thing I, I, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into how we got our child, my wife and I. God bless us with a very handsome baby boy. But before that, the devil didn't want us to have a child to a point where when our child was born, he was born lifeless. When I carried that baby in my hand, oh my goodness. They were, the nurses were trying to get him to, 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 to make a sound. And they were, what is going on there? Yeah, we're trying to make him get a sound. And oh my goodness works it worked before for me it would keep working for me because the person who released the word stands back of his word god cannot fail that is what i want when you study the word the word transforms you into a position where you act like god you become god come on now come on now come with me to the book of john this is the last scripture, chapter 10. Can we look at verse 34 together? Hallelujah. Jesus was saying something here. But before that, let's, 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 let's look at it from verse 30. Once again, the people picked up stones. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. Before we go there, come, come to a, uh, come to a, uh, ah, there, there, there's so much here. Okay, let's. John 10, 27. Let's start from verse 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. For my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the father's hand. The father and I are one. Aha. Uh -huh. The Jews thought Jesus took his foot in his mouth. Who are you? What the heck are you talking about? Who is this kid anyway? We know your father is the poor man. is just a carpenter. You didn't go to school. What kind of audacity is this? We know your sisters. We know your brothers. They're raved and ran. Once again, look at verse 31. The people picked up stones to kill him. This sounds like the people in my, my culture. You know, when you do wrong, they stone you to death. All right. I, 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 Jesus said, verse 32, at my father's direction, I have done many good works. For which one are you going to stone me? Verse 31, 33 says, they replied, we are stoning you not for any good work, but for blasphemy. In other words, they say he's talking heresy. You are a mere man claiming to be God. How did Jesus claim to be God? Verse 30, 30, 30, verse 30 says, the he says, the Father and I are one. Last week when I said to you, uh, you are the word of God. I know some people will say I'm speaking heresy as well. Amen. And even when I say through the word of God and faith, you can operate as God. I know people are going to say, I'm speaking heresy as well. So they said he blasphemed. He said he was blaspheming. All right. He says, uh, look, at, come with me now. He says, we're going to read that again. Verse 33. They replied, we are stoning you not for any good work, but for blasphemy. You are a mere man claiming to be God. So <laughs> to accept your position in God is going to upset some people. For you to even say, I am one with Christ, 
So many Christians have been taught the wrong thing. They keep saying, oh, I'm a poor, wretched sinner. There's nothing good about me. Oh, Lord, I depend on your mercy. Come on now. If you're a poor, wretched sinner, then the blood of Jesus was shed for nothing for you. The blood was shed so that you can become no more a poor, wretched sinner, but to become a child of God. All right. Look at verse 34. Jesus replied, is it not written in your own scripture that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say, ye are gods, ye are gods. He's referring them to their own scripture, which they are ignorant of. Just like so many people are ignorant of God's word. So they pick on people who are scratching something that they dare not or they don't want to scratch. Is it not written? I'm reading it again. 34. Jesus replied. Is it not written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say ye are gods. And you know that the scripture cannot be altered. So if those people who received God's message were called gods. <laughs> so when you receive God's message, you become God. And that means you can act on behalf of your father. Not God to be worshipped, but God because your father is God. A cow gives birth to a cattle. A dog gives birth to a puppy. A cat gives birth to a kitten. God gives birth to God. And it, you are born by his word. First Peter said, First Peter told us that. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. He said, we're begotten of the word of God. So if we're begotten of the word of God, Jesus he says, he says here, he says, and verse 35, and you know that the scriptures cannot be altered. So if those people who received God's message were called gods, why do you call it blasphemy when I say I am the son of God? After all, the father set me apart and sent me into the world. Don't believe me unless I carry out my father's work. But if I do his work, believe in the evidence of the miraculous work I have done. Even if you don't believe me, then you will know that I, and understand that the father is in me and I am in the father. The word places you at the top. Let's operate from the top. I want you to look at your circumstance now. And now figure out, check, what does the word of God say about the circumstance that you are faced with right now? What does the word of God say about the condition that you are in right now? What does the word of God say about the things that are going on in your life? Find out the word of God. Don't rush, don't rush, don't rush, don't rush. It's not about quoting it. It's about allowing it to first be digested to be assimilated in your spirit digested and let it produce life and out of that life you can now speak and now you become god over that circumstance hallelujah you become god over that circumstance when Jesus said, I am one with my father, people got upset. No, it's because of ignorance. And you don't have to cut yourself short to, make, to come to the level of somebody who refuses to grow. No, you don't. From today, no sickness is allowed in your body because you are God. From today, no evil plagues your family. Because the word of God has placed you and made you a God over everything the enemy represents. Jesus did not say, go pray to the father to heal the sick. He said, go heal the sick. Jesus didn't say, go pray to raise the dead. He said, raise the dead. Why? Because fellowshipping with God gets us charged up like batteries so that when the occasion arises, we are ready charged. We are ready to act. We are ready to discharge. Spend time fellowshipping with God. Spend time serving. 
spend, spend time fasting and praying, meditating, focusing on the word of God, developing capacity for the power of God to flow unhindered or fetter through you. And you will see that God will begin to use you more and do strange things and greater things through you. The word has always worked. The word is still working and the word will always continue to work. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you from today. Take the word pill every day. Take the word as breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Let it transform you. Let it bring healing to you. If when you receive God's word, you become God. Hallelujah. That is why in the book of Psalm 82, verse 6, he said, and I said, you are gods. Ye are sons of the Most High. I said, you are gods. You are sons of the Most High. <laughs> Let's act it out. Let's go and act it out. We are sons of the Most High. Let's act it out. 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 Yes, go ahead and ask it out. Now you can challenge the circumstances around you. Now you can challenge the situations around you. Now you can speak to everything that has buffeted you. You can speak to everything that has challenged you. You can address it with boldness and you are going to get results. The Lord has blessed you. Go and manifest the blessing in the name of Jesus.